You're an insecure, pampered woman accustomed to attracting men. But you're not quite sure whether they're attracted to you or to your money. You may never know. Anything else? Are you happy? I've had many happy moments in my life, yes. I don't think happiness, being happy, is a, a perpetual state uh, that anyone can be in. No, because life isn't that way. But uh, I suppose I have a certain peace of mind, yes. Hey, friend. Welcome to my channel, Karina Lude, where we deep dive and break down the most iconic stars in history. If you're not yet subscribed, please be sure to do so and turn your notifications on so you never miss an upload. Today, we are talking about the iconic Princess Grace Kelly. Grace was inducted into the International Best Dress List Hall of Fame in 1960, and she was named the Best Tailored Woman by the Custom Tailored Guild of America in 1955. During her lifetime, she was known for popularizing the fresh face look, which featured glowing skin and natural beauty with minimal makeup. She is remembered for her college girl everyday style, which was defined by her put together yet simple appearance. And do you guys know that Betty Draper's appearance and style are influenced by Grace Kelly? Betty Draper from Mad Men. And she is frequently praised in the TV series by other characters for resembling her. Kelly's life was spent largely in the spotlight. Her on-screen grace as a princess captivated the world and her aura of mystery and confidence as an actress drew rave reviews. She responded to the attention with her trademark, wit and grace, saying, the freedom of the press works in such a way that there is not much freedom from it. End quote. Grace Kelly was also known as the Ice Queen. She was involved in a number of scandals, some of which were buried and forgotten because of her royal status. Despite the heiress prudishness, Kelly slept with several of her co-stars, including some who were married and much older than she was. Many of Kelly's fellow Hollywood starlets have later commented on media portrayal of her as a virtuous role model, even with her hectic personal life. Grace Kelly, however, will get away with having many lovers, Clara Bow once stated. Do you understand why? She went on to say, the general public has no chance of accepting this, or in other words, believing this. She had more boyfriends in a month than I had in a lifetime, Zaza Gabor was known to say. And Zaza had about nine husbands. And Zaza went on to say that she slept with whoever caught her fancy. Ouch. We are gonna get into more of the scandals as well as her charitable work also, because Grace was a really lovely person aside from all the scandals, okay? But before we get into that, I know you guys are interested in a few of her favorite things as well as her beauty secrets. And we're gonna get into those first before we get into her childhood. So her favorite color was pink, green, and aqua. And Grace Kelly's favorite accessories, being a fashion icon, she loved gloves, a Hermes handbag, and foulard shoes. She also loved French food a lot. To keep herself full throughout the day, Grace always began the day with a big bowl of oatmeal. Before lunch, if she had any hunger, she would reach for one of the many dried fruits, carrot sticks, or celery sticks that were always within reach. Grace avoided meat and fish as much as possible, but she wasn't vegan. She just avoided them as much as possible. And she stayed hydrated by consuming lots of water and water-rich foods like apples. She occasionally broke her sugar restrictions to indulge in a cookie every now and then. If she had a sweet tooth after dinner, she typically drank green tea sweetened with honey. According to biographer Gina McKinnon, she preferred to style her own hair and do her own makeup. Even after becoming the Princess of Monaco, she still always had a comb and powder in her bag and would touch her own self up. Kelly was religious about keeping her hands moisturized, according to beauty expert Peter Lamas. And when I asked her why, she replied a woman's age shows on her hand much quicker than anywhere else. McKinnon says she looked after herself. She swam a lot, she didn't smoke, and she drank a lot of water and used to do ballet when she was younger. She also practiced yoga and would bring healthy snacks like the celery and apricots and carrot sticks to set with her so she wouldn't indulge in, you know, all the food that they would have on set. Her posture was always so straight. Kind of remind me of Diane Carroll. If you haven't seen my Diane Carroll video, they had the similar posture because she was a dancer. She maintained an elongated, confident stance at all times. 
Now, as far as her childhood, Kelly was born into a prestigious family on November 12, 1929, a Scorpio in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. John B. Kelly Sr., her father was the son of Irish immigrants. He was an Olympic gold medalist in the sport of sculling and won three Olympic medals. Interestingly, he was the proud owner of a thriving brickwork contracting firm with a stellar reputation in the East. In 1935, he ran as a Democrat for mayor of Philadelphia and lost by a narrow margin in the city's history. And in World War II, President Roosevelt appointed him to the position of National Director of Physical Fitness. His brother and Grace Kelly's uncle, George, won the Pulitzer Prize for drama and wrote and directed films for MGM and Paramount. Kelly's mom was born to parents who immigrated from Germany. Margaret was the first woman to coach women's athletics at Penn and had previously taught physical education there. In her younger years, she also worked as a model. Margaret Kelly married John B. Kelly in 1924 and stayed at home to raise her children until they were all in school. Afterward, she became involved in a number of community groups. All of the kids grew up in a Catholic household. Kelly was raised in a tight-knit Catholic neighborhood. St. Bridget's in East Falls is where she was baptized and where she attended elementary school. Kelly and her sisters modeled clothes for local charity events while she was a student at the Catholic Ravenhill Academy. She made her acting debut at the young age of 12 in 1942 with the East Falls-based Old Academy players in the leading role of Don't Feed the animals. Kelly had a privileged upbringing, but she wasn't always happy with her life circumstances. She was the youngest of four kids, with rumors circulating that her dad had a soft spot for his oldest daughter, Peggy. Kelly admitted, we were always competing for everything, competing for love. Elizabeth Lizanne Kelly, the actress, younger sister, had said that the star's mother used physical punishment and demanded obedience. So Kelly's upbringing would color the way she raised her own children. Kelly admitted to regularly, you know, disciplining her children with a few spanking, according to her biographer, J. Randy Taraborelli via The Independent. She completed her education at the exclusive Stevens School in May of 1947, where she excelled in both the arts and academics through her participation in the school's drama and dance programs. The words Miss Grace P. Kelly, a famous star of stage and screen, appeared in the Stevens Prophecy section in July of 1947. Kelly was rejected from Bennington College due to her poor performance in mathematics. Kelly's parents were resistant to her wanting to be an actress at first, but she overcame their opposition. Her father was especially disappointed because he thought actors were only a slim cut above streetwalker. Ouch. Now, as far as her career, starting out, she used a scene from her Uncle George Kelly's play, The Torchbearers, for her audition at New York's American Academy of Dramatic Arts. She was able to secure an interview with the admissions office and ultimately gain admission with George help, despite the fact that the school had already reached its semester quota. It was on Broadway in Strindberg's The Father that she made her acting debut opposite Raymond Massey, where she'd been acting since she was a young girl. At the age of 19, she played Tracy Lord in a production of the Philadelphia story. Kelly's uncle was always there to give her advice and support her as an actor. During this time, Kelly allegedly caused a scandal by having an affair with Mary Jewish actor and director who was much older than her, although he was separated from his wife at the time of the affair. Kelly wrote to her friend, the fact that I could fall in love with a Jew was beyond them, end quote. She lived in Manhattan's Barbizon Hotel for Women at her father's request. The Barbizon, if you don't know, if you're not familiar with it, is a New York City building on Manhattan's Upper East Side. It was a female-only residential hotel for many decades, and it catered to young women who came to New York City for professional opportunities like modeling, being a film star, but still desired a safe retreat that felt like a family home. So it was very popular for that, and it was mostly for wealthy, you know, you know what I mean? She was signed to the John Robert Powers Agency as a model, and her first modeling jobs included commercials for bug spray and cigarettes. Kelly was said to be fond of dancing to Hawaiian music down to Barbizon's hallways, and given to shocking her fellow residents by performing topless. Later, she wrote, I have wonderful memories of the three years I spent at the Barbizon. So seeing this wriggle character and people saying, hey, she used to be topless, just dancing in the hallways. <laughs> That must have been interesting to see, you know. Impressed by her work in The Father, Henry Hathaway, director of the 20th Century Fox film 14 Hours, offered her a small role in the film. Kelly had a minor role as a woman 
contemplating divorce. Douglas commented, in two senses, she did not have a bad side. You could film her from any angle and she was one of the most untemperamental, cooperative people in the business. Following the film's release, the Grace Kelly fan club was formed, quickly gaining popularity across the country with local chapters sprouting up and attracting a large number of members. Kelly described her fan club as terribly amusing. She went on to film a few more roles, but her reception was not as nice as before. Many said she lacked animation and appeared dry on screen. After filming High Noon, Kelly returned to New York City and took private acting lessons, wanting to be taken seriously as an actress. Kelly had an affair with Gary Cooper, who was 28 years her senior and married while filming High Noon. His marriage, especially considering the age gap between him and his wife, would become a recurring theme in Kelly's life. Of Kelly, Cooper said, she looked like a cold dish with a man until you got her pants down, then she'd explode, and, end quote. In September 1952, director John Ford noticed Kelly in a screen test for the film Taxi and flew her out to Los Angeles to audition. Kelly demonstrated breeding quality and class, according to Ford. She was given the role as well as a seven-year contract with a relatively low weekly salary of $850, which is equivalent to like $8,674 in today's time. You can say Kelly had her big break with the movie Mogambo, which was set in Africa. Kelly won a Golden Globe Award for Best Supporting Actress and received her first Academy Award nomination for Best Supporting Actress for her performance. The thrill of this moment keeps me from saying what I really feel. I can only say thank you with all my heart to all who made this possible for me. Thank you. Kelly claimed, Mogambo had three things that interested me, John Ford, Clark Gable, and a trip to Africa with expenses paid, suggesting the two would eventually have an affair. I would not have participated in the filming of Mogambo if it had been shot in Arizona. That's what she said. Kelly's mother found out about the affair and came to Africa to chaperone her young daughter after hearing the news that Kelly and Gable had gotten romantically involved. Since Gable supposedly dumped Kelly when she became too clingy, a chaperone may not have been necessary. Kelly famously said, what else is there to do if you're alone in a tent in Africa with Clark Gable? End quote. Clark Gable was handsome. And yes, there is a video coming on him soon. In the film Rear Window, Kelly played a wealthy Manhattan socialite and famous model who never wore the same dress twice. This role was unlike any of the previous women she had played. Hitchcock emphasized her elegance by changing her outfits frequently, including glamorous evening short dresses, a sheer negligee over a sleek nightgown, a full skirted floral dress, and casual pairs of pants. Kelly was praised once more when the film was released in October 1955. Variety's film critic remarked on the casting, stating that there is an earthy quality to the relationship between Stewart and Miss Kelly, and that both do a fine job of the picture's acting demands. She went on to star in other successful films called The Country Girl, and as a result, of her performance in The Country Girl, Kelly won the Academy Award for Best Actress. While filming The Country Girl, rumors spread that Kelly had an affair with Crosby, Ben Crosby. It is said that Crosby came to Kelly's hotel room on a night she won an Oscar for her performance in the film, expecting to spend the night with her, but instead found Marlon Brando, who had won an Oscar earlier that night, in her bed. When they got back together for High Society, Crosby and Kelly probably didn't hook up again, but it's not impossible. Kelly's engagement to Prince Rainier, the third of Monaco occurred during filming. Actually, Kelly played a woman who was also engaged in the film, so she wore her real life 10.47 carat ring for the occasion. Kelly won the New York Film Critics Circle Award for Best Actress after receiving an Oscar nomination for her performances in her three major film roles in 1954. The New York Times praised her performance in The Country Girl as excellent, and her marquee credits in Rare Window were on par with, if not better than, those of Stewart and Hitchcock. While filming Dial M for murder in 1954, Kelly's personal problems became increasingly public. She had an affair with, Way with Ray Milland, who was 20 years into his marriage at the time. After discovering he was dealing with Kelly, his wife kicked him out. Milland allegedly planned to divorce his wife and marry Kelly until Milland calculated how much money he would lose in a divorce. Milland remained a devoted husband until his death in 1986. Kelly's career may have been in jeopardy because of her affair with Milland. Hedda Hopper, a well-known gossip columnist, wrote about the affair and labeled Kelly a nymphomaniac. Kelly's reputation as a home wrecker nearly ended her successful career. It was the 1950s and America was going through a period of going back to its strict religious, almost medieval roots. 
Actresses at the time couldn't be anything but prim and proper. Following the completion of Rear Window, Toko Reed, Country Girl, and Green Fire, Kelly flew to the French Rivera and began working on her third and final Hitchcock film, To Catch a Thief, which is also a wonderful visually pleasing movie. Kelly, who was loaned to Paramount for the fifth time, played a temptress who dresses in luxurious and alluring clothes, while Cary Grant played a former cat burglar who is now looking to catch a thief who is impersonating him. Kelly and Grant grew close to one another and came to respect and admire one another. Years later, when asked who his favorite actress of all time was, Grant said, well, I really like Grace better than Ingrid Bergman. There was calmness in her. Her final role was in High Society, which is also a wonderful. She just had hit for movies. I'm not even gonna lie she probably is one of those starlets that I break down that I actually seen all of her movies and I loved all of them so it was a remake of the Philadelphia story the other leads were Bing Crosby Frank Sinatra and Celeste Holm and July 1956 Variety called it possibly her most relaxed performance and it was she was very likable and fun she even had a drunk scene in there just a very pleasant movie if you haven't seen it I will be doing a breakdown of that movie also. Of course, Grace Kelly and John F. Kennedy dated, <laughs> given their respective track records. Kelly and Kennedy knew each other before either of them became a household name. Their fathers were friends and fellow Irish-American millionaires. Their relationship was so serious in the early 1950s that they talked about getting married, but Kennedy Sr. intervened because he didn't want an actress to get in the way of his son's political career. When Jackie and John F. Kennedy were married in 1954, he was recovering from back surgery. Jackie visited Kennedy in the hospital to cheer him up and she had Kelly come by even though she had no idea of their past relationship poor Jackie Kelly showed up disguised as a doctor or a nurse an anonymous source claimed that she had performed lewd acts on recuperating Kennedy she was engaged to the famous fashion designer Oleg Cassini before she became a princess Cassini is widely credited with creating Jackie Kennedy's iconic look Cassini and Kelly were engaged to be married but his Russian heritage and history of divorce caused this approval from Kelly's family. Kelly broke off the engagement to gain her parents' blessing. There was talk that Kelly was expecting Cassini's child, but she hadn't, you know, she got rid of the child. As a result of her marriage, Kelly became a member of the royal family of Monaco in an effort to gain her father's favor. Some say she got married only to please her dad. Kelly was one of the highest paid and most respected actresses in the world by this point in her career. She was asked to join the American delegation to the Cannes Film Festival in 1955. She met Prince Rainier, the third of Monaco, who was on the hunt for a bride during a photo shoot. If he didn't have any children, France would reoccupy Monaco, so it was a very dire situation for him. Later known, the prince had this to say about his dream girl. He said, her hair is the color of falling leaves, and in the wind it floats around her shoulders. Her eyes are a gorgeous blue or violet with golden flecks. The media made their romance sound like something out of a fairy tale. They married on April 19, 1956, after a year-long courtship that was described as containing a good deal of sensible evaluation process on both sides. Naturally, Kelly's family had to come up with a two million dowry in order for her to become a princess. That very evening, the couple set sail on his yacht for a seven week honeymoon cruise of the Mediterranean. Prince Rainier banned her films in Monaco after their wedding. Though some believe she deeply missed her acting career, she often spoke of the rampant problems afflicting the film industry. Hollywood amuses me, she said, holier than thou for the public and unholier than the devil in reality, end quote. Prince Rainier was quoted in the Los Angeles Times claiming that he and Kelly agreed that she would retire. He said, I don't want my wife to work, adding that the couple were happy with our decision. And I would imagine being a princess, that would be a requirement, right? That wouldn't make sense to be acting and you're a whole princess. Kelly's friend, Judith Balaban Quinn, told The Independent that Kelly's rural life was harder than any day on a movie set and she would be called upon to create more illusion that she had as an actress, end quote. The article also cited Joan Dell, a close friend of Kelly's and author of My Days with Princess Grace of Monaco, who said, I'm sure there were times in the early years when she felt somewhat like a prisoner in a gilded cage behind the palace walls. An even more pessimistic picture of Kelly's royal life is painted by biographer Wendy Lay, who writes in her book, True Grace, The Life and Times of an American Princess, that Kelly was humiliated and extremely unhappy after discovering that her husband was cheating on her within months of their wedding. Mm. In 1957, Princess Grace gave birth to Princess Caroline, Prince Albert, their heir, and Princess Stephanie. 
Even though Grace Kelly adored her children, she often alienated them, according to them. Princess Caroline of Monaco wrote that her nanny, Maureen Wood, was the key figure in her and her brother Prince Albert's upbringing. She told the authors, when we were little, we were probably closer to our nanny than we were to our parents. Kelly, Princess Caroline's mother, said her daughter missed her nanny so much when she was away that whenever Wood went on vacation, she would ask her to return early. Mm. But Prince Albert told People via Vanity Fair that Kelly is a loving and caring hands-on mom. Additionally, he gushed over his mother saying that although becoming a member of the Monaco royal family must have been hard for her at first, he never heard her complain. Grace stopped acting while married. Instead, she did her royal duties and volunteered. As princess consort, she was president of Monaco's Red Cross in support of Josephine Baker's orphanage, Rainbow Coalition for Children. She gave gifts to orphans in Monaco at Christmas. The princess led the Garden Club of Monaco and the International Arts Foundation. Grace founded AMADE Mondial in 1963 after seeing the plight of Vietnamese children. Princess Grace supported local artisans by forming the Princess Grace Foundation in 19. 1964, and in 1965, she became an honorary member of La Leche League, a worldwide breastfeeding support group. Grace hosted an annual American Week in Monaco with baseball and ice cream. Annually, the palace also celebrated Thanksgiving. While returning to Monaco, Rock Ego Country Estate on September 13, 1982, Grace experienced a minor brain hemorrhage, a stroke. Because of this, she was unable to maintain controls of her vehicle and went careening off the narrow mountain road, plunging about 120 feet to the ground below. Stephanie, her adolescent daughter, was riding shotgun and tried unsuccessfully to regain control of the vehicle. Princess Grace's brain, thorax, and femur were all injured, and she was rushed to the Monaco Hospital, now known as the Princess Grace Hospital. After Rainier decided to turn off her life support the following evening, she passed away at 10.55 p.m. According to an article published in Reader's Digest, the accident sparked numerous theories of foul play. Many people found Kelly's decision to drive herself rather than hire a chauffeur odd. That is odd for a princess, right? There was also talks that Kelly's stroke was to blame for the accident. Stephanie had to miss her mother's funeral because she had a mild concussion and a hairline fracture. Cary Grant, Nancy Reagan, Daniel Mitrand, Empress Farah of Iran and Diana, Princess of Wales. I just did a breakdown for her. That was wonderful. Check that out also. I'll put it in the end screen. Were among the 400 guests. Rainier, who never remarried, was buried next to her after his death in 2005. And this is the saddest quote that she said that just like, oh my goodness. She said, I would like to be remembered as someone who accomplished useful deeds and who was a kind and loving person. I would like to leave the memory of a human being with the correct attitude and who did the best to help others, end quote. Kelly's legacy as a theater artist, television vision actress and iconic Hollywood film star will live on. Kelly has been described as one of the classic Hitchcock blondes as well as one of the most beautiful women in film in history and according to one author she is the elegant glamour girl of the screen and she is. She was very elegant, very sophisticated like I said remind me a lot of Diane Carroll. I also want you guys to check out that video also because Diane Carroll was actually bullied by not just her peers in the industry but growing up for being so elegant and bougie. So it's very interesting but I love Princess Grace. All her movies I said are hits. I don't think even the ones that people critiqued very harshly, I found very interesting. And I just think people weren't as cultured back then. <laughs> I really find visually her movies to just be pleasant. She is stunning on screen. I mean, just look at her, right? The epitome of grace and class and elegance and just sophistication. And we're not gonna judge her for her life, okay? We, she was in an industry that that's what it was known for. And of course, these people have lives too. They do their thing. So aside from all of those things, she's still remembered an icon. But comment below, what do you guys think? <laughs> what is the most interesting thing you've learned? And also comment below, who else you guys would like me to do a breakdown on? If you like the music you're listening to, the link is in the description, support my brother. I love you guys so much. Thank you for tuning in until next time.